Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Code with Sunny. And in this video, we will be talking about the problem Lucky Chains of uh, Educational Code Forces Round 139. And uh, the problem is D type. Okay, so the problem is actually interesting. So I thought to discuss my approach, my ideas with you. And also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I would recommend you to subscribe uh, my channel because uh, we are going to upload quality video editorials. Uh, for uh, many of the problems so uh, that would help you to enhance your problem solving skills okay so without wasting our time let's move on to discuss this problem okay so i would uh, ask you to read this problem uh, at least one time uh, i'm just jumping out to explain the problem statement then we would be discussing the idea behind that and then finally we would be having solution plus code as well okay so let's move out to discuss this problem okay so uh, the problem c is that you are given a pair let's say pair is x comma y okay and the pair is called lucky if gcd of x comma y is must be equal to 1 okay so uh, any pair x comma y is lucky only when their uh, greatest common divisor is going to be equal to 1 okay now you are given t test cases okay now i'm just also discussing the test cases and uh, you know the value of x and y uh, at most value so uh, you are given the n the number of pairs which is actually the test cases and next you are given the n pairs okay now for each test case you are given the pairs uh, let's say x1 comma y1 then again you are going to given the pairs x2 comma y2 and so on for all the test cases okay now what you have to find you have to find out the length of the longest pairs okay now a pair is something like this suppose you have been given x comma y okay so the chain is going to be formed uh, like this the next uh, element of the chain is x plus 1 comma y plus 1 and the next element of the chain is x plus 2 comma y plus 2 and it it goes on something like that x plus k comma y plus k so what is the length of the chain length of the chain is k plus 1 okay so now suppose uh, there exists some value of k such that the length of uh, length of the chain is k plus 1 okay now uh, we are going to extend the chain uh, uh, like this in such a way such that gcd of all these elements like all the pairs should be lucky like this should be lucky pair this should also be a lucky pair and this should also be a lucky pair and so on even this should be also a lucky pair okay it means that uh, these all pairs should be lucky okay so what is uh, the maximum length of the chain that we can get okay so in other words if we try to explain this problem in simpler words you have been given the pair x comma y and you you want to find out the length of the longest chain such that all the elements of the chain are lucky it means x plus 1 comma y plus 1 and it goes on something like this x plus k comma y plus k all pairs should be lucky it means that gcd of uh, x i comma y i for every i belong to you know for every i belong to you know 0 to uh, let's say k uh, must be uh, you know gcd must be equal to 1 okay so for each test case you have been given the value of x comma y and you want to find the length of the longest chain that you can form such that uh, all pairs are going to be lucky so how do you uh, just do this problem okay so let's move on to find out the approach to solve this problem efficiently now we use the concept of gcd so gcd of uh, a comma b must uh, is equal to gcd of you know b uh, sorry let me write down a comma b minus a you must have heard this property gcd now also you have been said that x must be less than y okay so uh, like uh, you need to just check it out how you can transform this uh, value you know y is greater than x so you can write down gcd of x comma y must be equal to gcd of x comma y minus x now there is one more thing like uh, you know you need to print the uh, answer minus one for for that test case where uh, you'd uh, you'd be having the length of the length of the chain is going to be infinite infinite if the length of the chain is going to be infinite for a particular test case where you would be given some pair then you would be printing minus one as your answer 
okay now how the length of the chain is going to be uh, minus 1 so let's uh, try to find out that test case then we'll be solving the other part okay suppose the pair is going to be consecutive okay suppose the element is going to be 8 9 okay for a particular test case so you can see uh, the next element is going to be 9 10 sorry next pair is going to be 9 10 then the next pair is going to be 10 11 and so on you can see gcd is going to be 1 gcd is going to be 1 gcd is going to be 1 and it goes on something like this all the you know pairs have the gcd 1 so in this case we are going to have the infinite length of the chain in this uh, sequence so whenever we have a consecutive uh, uh, element uh, x comma y where x uh, uh, plus 1 is equal to y then we are going to have the infinite chain so if you also look out the using the property of gcd where gcd of a comma b is equal to gcd of a comma b minus a if you do something like this you will see that gcd of x comma y exactly equal to gcd of x comma y minus x so you can see uh, this can be also written as gcd of x comma if the elements have the difference as one you can see this has the difference one you can write down gcd of x comma one so if uh, if you can see if y minus x is, is exactly equal to 1 then your answer is minus 1 because the length of the chain will be going to be infinite okay so what about the other case if the answer is not going to be minus 1 how do you just find out the element suitable element like suitable answers what is the maximum length of the chain so let's try to figure it out okay so uh, now you can see uh, first of all what uh, uh, let me write down the approach approach okay so what is the first approach so you will use the property use the property uh, use the property wait a minute so we will use the property of gcd gcd of uh, x comma y must be equal to gcd of x comma y minus x so first you, you will transform y equal to y minus x okay so if you will do that then uh, you know then this can be written as gcd of x comma y where uh, we have transformed y equal to y minus x okay now after doing that you need to find out uh, the maximum length of the chain that you can extend okay now this is going to be important Le let's see how we are going to do that okay so uh, now uh, you, we have done something like this gcd of uh, x comma y uh, like we have transformed gcd of x comma y equal to gcd of x comma y minus x then we are going to write down over here now let's try to write down in terms in general statement like we have the pairs as uh, x comma y then we have x plus 1 comma y plus 1 and it goes on something like this x plus k comma y plus k okay so if we write down for the general pair so the general pair is some is is going to be written something like this x plus k comma y plus k right so if we use this property okay so uh, it, it it is going to be transformed into something like this okay gcd of x plus k comma y plus k is exactly equal to gcd of x plus k comma if you use this property it is going to be written as y plus k minus x plus k so uh, you would be having the value of y minus x okay so now uh, why i am using this property the reason is behind uh, the reason is simple uh, before the previous case like uh, if you go forward with this statement you have two uh, you have one unknown which is k but it is present at two different places so it is going to be very difficult to compute the length of the longest chain okay now here if you use the property of gcd so the statement gcd of x plus k comma y plus k is transformed into this statement gcd of x plus k comma y minus x now you can see the k is present which is this uh, only unknown is only present in this one part now it becomes easy to calculate the length of the longest chain so let's try to move forward with, with this statement gcd of x plus k comma y minus x okay now so let's uh, start with the basic one we have the pairs as x comma y x plus 1 comma y plus 1 and it goes on with x plus k comma y plus k right okay now what is our target so our new target is okay 
so uh, we'll for focus with this statement this is our new statement where we define our new target so our new target is find the length of the longest chain find the length of longest chain in such a way wait a minute let me write down in, in such a way such that gcd of x plus k comma y minus x will always be equal to 1 for all the uh, for all the pairs okay so let's write down for starting with k equal to 0 so it would be something like this gcd of you know x comma y minus x so uh, as you can see this is the very first uh, for the very first uh, element of the for the very first element of the chain this should be 1 and again gcd of x plus 1 comma y minus x this should also be equal to 1 and so on it would be it would be going something like this gcd of x plus k comma y minus x this should also be equal to 1 okay so these uh, like we have used the property of gcd to make the unknown k to be present on the only one part of the gcd not the both of the part like gcd of a comma b so uh, k is only present in the a part right which is x plus k so it helps in uh, finding out the length of the uh, longest chain efficiently okay so now now let's move on to the next part how we are going to find out the you know the desired length of the longest chain okay so uh, like we have the elements as we have the pairs okay so let's write down the gcd part gcd of x comma y then we have gcd of x plus 1 comma y and sorry uh, i'm really sorry this should be y minus x wait a minute uh, gcd of x plus 1 comma y minus x and it goes on with with something like this gcd of x plus k comma y minus x okay now uh, whenever we got the gcd of you know x plus let's say for the k plus 1th element and y minus x is not equal to 1 then we got the length of the longest pairs uh, you know uh, length of the longest chain is going to be k plus 1 okay so whenever we are uh, able to find out the for a certain pair this condition is going to hold which is not equal to 1 we are just going to stop our iteration so one of the ways to do the brute force approach other ways to find out the elements uh, find out the you know find out the length of the longest chain efficiently so how we are going to do that suppose let's call this y minus x as uh, uh, value as let's say wait a minute let's call this uh, let's give this uh, value a new element which is a okay so we'll write down gcd of x comma a and it goes on something like this gcd of x plus k comma a okay now here we are going to use the you know uh, idea of prime factors prime factors okay so why are, uh, we are going to use the idea of prime factors suppose a has the prime factor of let's say 2 power let's say uh, uh, 2 power p1 and again 3 power p2 again 5 power p3 and so on uh, like a can be represented as the product of their prime factors right so we would be only considering the prime factor exactly th uh, 2 exactly 3 exactly 5 okay now we need to make sure that whenever uh, this gcd of x plus k comma a becomes divisible by any of the prime factor it means that gcd will not be equal to 1 so gcd is not equal to 1 when any of the prime factor uh, let me write down any of the prime factor of a divides x plus k right so uh, we need to find that suitable k such that gcd of any of the prime factor is going to divide that value of x plus k okay so how do you f uh, how do you find out the value of k such that this is going to be hold okay so let's take an example from the problem statement and let's try to uh, figure it out suppose uh, the answer is for this 13 and 37 is going to be 1 okay so let's try to check it out how this answer is coming out to be 1 okay so we have this 13 and 37 okay so this is x and this is y so first we will transform this as 13 comma y minus x which is going to be 24 okay 
so we need to extend this chain so uh, it would be something like this you can see the next element of the uh, chain is going to be 14 comma you know 25 i think uh wait a minute sorry so uh, this is not some uh, this is not good so the next element of the chain is going to be 14 comma 38 and the next is again 15 comma 39 and it goes something like this you can see gcd is going to be 1 and gcd is going to be 2 so here our iteration will stop so the length of the chain is going to be only 1 okay so how do we uh, use the idea of gcd and find out the length of the longest chain and also using the idea of prime factors okay so this can be converted to you know gcd of uh, 13 plus k comma you know y minus x is going to be 24 okay so let's find out the prime factors uh, least prime factor of the 24 uh, like uh, it is going to be you know 2 and uh, you know 3 and uh, that's all you have this you can represent 24 as 2 square i think uh, you know it would be something like you know 12 into 2 and 12 can be represented as 4 into 3 okay so it can be represented as 2 cube into 3 power 1 okay 24 can be represented at this one so that's why i'm going to take uh, least prime factor of this 24 as 2 and 3 okay now you need to uh, find out the suitable k such that at which uh, the least prime factor of this uh, y minus x which is 24 uh, is going to divide this 13 plus k value so either 2 can divide this one or 3 can divide this one okay so when you want to extend this th uh, this value like 13 so the next value is 14 next value is 15 next value is 16 you can see 12 is you can see 2 is going to divide this value 14 uh, similarly you can see 3 is going to divide this value at 15 okay so for 2 what is the uh, like what is the value of k up to which you can extend this 13 so for 2 you can extend this uh, 13 to only 14 right so for 2 you can extend 13 to 14 only like uh, at the value of 14 2 is going to divide this uh, 13 plus k okay so uh, when you extend uh, when you put out the value of k as 1 you can see 2 is going to divide this uh, value 13 plus k so for 3 you can see uh, 13 is transformed to 15 then uh, you can see 3 is going to divide this value 15 okay so uh, you want to find out the uh, point at which 13 plus k 13 plus k is divisible by prime factor okay so you want to find out uh, at which value of k this 13 plus k is going to be divisible by the prime factor p why i'm going to find out the this uh, value of k for each of the prime factor because suppose the 2 is going to divide this 13 plus k at the value of k equal to 1 so 13 plus k becomes 14 and 2 now divides the value of 14 easily so when 2 divides the value of 14 easily you can see gcd will not be equal to 1 okay so at this point you can see gcd uh, will not be equal to 1 so our length of the chain must terminate okay so let's write down a general case okay so in general case what i can say is suppose uh, you know the value 13 uh, let's write down in general case x plus k and we have y minus x so we are going to represent y minus x as a okay suppose a has the prime factor as uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, uh what i can say uh, z comma p1 and let's say z1 z2 comma p2 and it goes on something like uh, let's say z uh, t comma p t uh, p1 p2 and let's say p2 okay okay so what we need to do is we need to find out the uh, uh, the point at which z1 divides x plus k like find the suitable k find the suitable k at which z1 divides x plus k if you are able to find the value then we can say now gcd will not be equal to 1 okay similarly we will do that for z2 and it goes on up to like zt okay so if we are able to find out the value z1 for z1 we have let's say uh, let's say we are able to find the value of x plus k okay so uh, like in the previous case uh, like we have 13 plus k and for the uh, for the value of 2 we are able to find out 
that at the value of 14 it is going to just divide out the you know 2 is going to divide this value 14 so what is the difference from 13 14 and 13 you will get the value as 1 okay so that's what you have to find so suppose you have you have find the suitable k which is x plus k2 okay okay let's call it as the k1 okay so uh, at the x plus k1 value z1 is going to divide this x plus k1 so you need to find out the difference x uh, from the x okay so you will get the value as k1 okay so for each z1 z2 and zt you need to find out the value as k1 k2 k3 and so on like uh, you know kt up to kt so what is your answer your answer is minimum of uh, this value it's called this value as uh, fx okay so minimum of fx is your answer okay so you need to find out up to which you can just uh, extend this x plus k value for each of the prime factor so uh, you need to find the minimum of all those k1 k2 k3 uh, where k1 k2 k3 is actually the difference suppose you have extended till x plus uh, k1 uh, okay so you need to find out the difference from the x so which is nothing but k1 okay for each k1 k2 k3 and up to kt for each prime factor you need to find out the difference up to which we we can extend this x plus k if you are able to find that then uh, our answer is minimum of, of all those because uh, if you are able to find out that minimum it means that at that point this prime factor is going to divide this value it means that after that we are going to get the gcd as gcd must be greater than 1 okay so uh, our answer is minimum of all those differences from the x okay so again how you uh, how you are going to find out this uh, prime factor z1 z2 zt efficiently we have uh, y max given as uh, 10 raised to the power 7 so it means that if you just find out the least prime factor for all those numbers of uh, up to the numbers 10 raised to the power 7 you can see the maximum value is going to be something around 8 and this uh, helps to optimize our solution because you can see if you multiply this 2 3 5 7 and uh, you know 11 and uh, multiplied by 13 and so on you will up to uh, you will get a maximum value as 8 which is you know uh, which is uh, if you multiply the numbers like this which is and uh, like uh, multiply the numbers like this 13 then 17 these are the prime numbers 19 and something like this the maximum value up to which this can hold is around less than or equal to 10 to the power 7 okay so it gives you the idea that the complexity will be something like for each test case if you o of n into 8 if you pre compute this uh, prime factor for each number you know what are the prime factors for a particular number so let's head out to the code and check it out how these all can be efficiented like these all can be implemented efficiently if you're not getting the logic don't no need to worry about i will explain all that stuff in the coding part as well okay so let's move out to the coding section <clears throat> i hope the screen is visible okay so uh so uh before for each test case we are just calculating like for uh, just uh, for uh, before we are working on the test cases we are just pre-computing the least prime factors okay so we have the maximum value is 1e7 and this spf and adjacency list we have just used to store the you know spf is nothing but smallest prime factor for each of the numbers from 1 to 10 raised to the power 7 and we have the adjacency list because you know for each number we need to we need to know what are the least prime factor for that number like in case of 24 uh, you can see uh, it can be represented as you know 12 into 2 uh, like uh, and 12 can be represented as 4 into 3 and this 2 is over here so we have 2 cube into 3 right so 24 can be represented as 2 cube into 3 so the what is the least prime factors of 24 which is 2 and 3 so okay so 24 in case of 24 it will store 2 and 3 only now this is the part that uh, that is going to calculate the least prime factors for each number okay now uh, here i am just storing out you can see the least prime factors for each of the i from 1 to 1e power 7 if you are just uh, not uh, getting this idea how we have done that if you can search for the least prime factor using c you can get the article on the geeks for geeks i think okay so this will store the least prime factor now let's try to work on for each test case we have the x value of x and y and let's check it out if gcd of x comma y is greater than one we need to output zero because the length of the chain is going to be zero 
now let's try to find out the value of y minus x okay that is the value of a in the in my explanation if y is 1 you can see we will get the infinite length of the chain now what if y is not equal to 1 let's try to find out the minimum value now for each of the least prime factor of this y we will just find out the you know the difference how we will find out the difference first we'll find out the ceiling value of the division then we'll multiply with that prime factor okay so this will give me the upper bound right so it it would work something like this if you're not getting this suppose uh suppose the you know we have in the previous test case we have this 13 and our least prime factor is to uh, like uh, we need to extend this 13 plus k to a suitable number okay so what we will do uh, do is we will just find out the 13 by 2 ceiling value of this 13 uh, uh, let me write down ceiling value of this 13 by 2 division okay so it would give you 6.5 which is nothing but 7 if you find out the ceiling value then we will multiply it by 2 which will give me 14 okay so at the point of 14 2 is going to divide this value 14 it means what is the difference up to which the length of the chain can be extended which is 14 minus 13 which is only 1 so that is the idea that i am going to use so for any general element let's say we have x and we have the prime factor as p so what i have done is i have just uh, done find out the ceiling value of this x plus p so ceiling value can also be found out with the this the statement x plus p minus 1 upon p okay so don't get confused then we get multiplied by p then if the if the value that i get we are going to subtract with x so that's what i have done over here then we take the minimum of all those values and that is the value is our answer because up to which we can extend this uh, length of the chain because after that the least prim the prime factor is going to divide that element so this is all about the code if you have any doubts you can reach out to me in the comment section of the video and like regarding anything uh, like if you have doubts in the solution part in the problem statement feel free to reach out to me through the comment section of the video and do not forget to like this video subscribe this video thank you for watching this video